today's topic is what to tell my son when he gets older. about where to meet girls. This is something I've been reading about recently. And a lot of it makes sense to my life experience years ago when I was trying to meet girls is that going to a bar and meeting girls is literally a waste of time. A lot of it's related to the fact that there's lots of competition which there was, a lot of it is, a lot of the girls there are kind of not there to meet people, but they're there to be with their friends, fair enough, and to get attention. And so, if you take a bar with 100 girls in it, and you look around, you realize that maybe only 10 to 20 of them are good looking, And uh, of those number, how many are actually even looking to beat someone that night? So you have a bunch of guys there, or probably they're just to meet somebody, basically trying to meet, say, 20 to 30 girls, tops, even talk to them. And of those 20 to 30, how many are even interested in even talking to a stranger? Reminds me when I was in university. I actually, I don't know, maybe the bar scene was different when I was younger. But you could actually meet and talk to people quite easily. And I've heard it's different now. But this is where it's fascinating. I met this one interesting first week of university, standing in line for a registration of some sort. I don't even know the guy's name. Talked to him a few times first year. And I distinctly remember, very friendly, outgoing. And he'd interrupt our conversation periodically when a girl would walk by and introduce himself and say something interesting and how's it going, blah, 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 just something friendly and uh, ask them out. And I thought it was rather bold. He apparently had an interesting backstory which I found out later. But the bottom line was the guy basically made the decision he was going to be fearless. Now, this is where he's quite the rock star. The Frost Week had these, well, in hindsight it looks silly, but you know, they're kind of meet and greet things. And one of them was a kissing contest. So the announcer says, who's gonna be in the kissing contest? And no one's saying anything. And suddenly this guy jumps on stage by himself and says, me. And then the guy goes, well, you know, you have to have a girl. And he picks out the most attractive girl in the front of this line says her. And she actually got up. And along with other couples, they basically they went out and had a big kissing contest. It went on for like four or five hours. And slightly got slightly erotic at the end. I'm told I wasn't going to see it. And the guy won. And he ended up dating that girl for a while. And she was way above his league because this guy was average. But lesson taught to me. His backstory, interestingly enough, was that he'd had some near death experience. I'm not sure, I think he was in a coma for a day, even. And uh, whatever had happened scared the living heck out of him. And he had a realization that. Everything else, nothing really mattered. And that was his philosophy in life. And I guess he was an outgoing person to begin with. But whatever inhibitions he had in life were gone. So, back to what I'm going to tell my son. Ironically enough, I can remember two or three events myself where I was meeting girls during the day, non, non-events. One of them was we are getting our grad photos taken, final year, and I'm stalking to the girl beside us and I believe it or not they're actually doing a bit of makeup for us and somehow the conversation got started and we ended up dating a couple times and to be honest nothing really clicked but my god she was definitely 
a nine or a ten. And uh, ironically enough, we were she was Roman Catholic, and I think that was basically why she didn't want to go further. Her mother had issues with that, so I met her mother even. Um, having said that, it was quite the uh, quite the event. But we met literally during the day. And there's been a few other times where I'd meet somebody in the library of all places. So I'm going to basically give my son the advice that you really have to choose areas that there's no competition. And meaning no competition. You're not sitting here in a loud environment where there's 13 other people trying to approach the same girl you're trying to talk to. There are exceptions. I had a bar that I lived in in Vancouver. I was already married. But of a dozen friends, about four of them met wives there. And they had this interesting combination. It was never supposed to be a dance bar, but they did, and they kept getting fined. But it was essentially a dance bar, sit-down place. And the vibe, or whatever it was, was very friendly. And I don't know how many conversations I had one-on-one with girls in that one place. And this is... Everyone else I mentioned the same thing. Just had the right vibe. It was the right neighborhood. And quite frankly, it was uh, always a good time. So there are exceptions, but my point being is, well, maybe you can find one of those bars in every city, I don't know. My point being is, I have to go where the demand is lower and the supply is higher, and that's where normal life comes in. Even chatting with a girl and getting her number in the coffee shop might be something. That's it.